So when the first dollar drop that I did, like literally within 45 minutes, people were reselling them for $1,000. And it was like, oh my God, like what the hell? This is crazy. And now those are $100,000. My name is Mike Winkleman, AKA Beeple, and I am a digital artist. I started making art as Beeple in 2003, I believe. The first stuff that I did was actually music. And then I started doing short films and very abstract visuals where the audio and visuals were very tightly synced. And then in 2007, I started the Everydays project, and that is where I do a picture every day from start to finish, and I've been doing that for, you know, 14 years now. Some of the pieces are pretty gross, pretty weird. Some of them are just straight up nasty, if I'm being honest. Every day when I sit down, I'm very much trying to concentrate and sort of listen to the little voice in my head, which is what is the picture I'm most interested in making that day? And it isn't a super conscious choice what those things are, but I feel like if I make the picture that I'm most excited about making, people will respond to that. They can innately see the passion that went into that. Things like where people are drinking, you know, milk from Buzz Light's boob. If I would have asked somebody before, like, do you think people will like this? Like, they'll be like, no, that's super dumb. Why would you do that? But then like tons of people do love it. And so it's like, I think people are actually much weirder even than they think. And I think sometimes to cut through the noise, you have to go real hard. I grew up in Wisconsin. It was a very, very small town. Nobody was really into art. I had one friend who was into weird electronic music, Aphex Twin and stuff like that. This is in the like mid nineties. So there wasn't as much sort of exposure to, you know, just, oh, just pop on the internet and you can find all kinds of crazy stuff. You had people making something entirely yourself in your bedroom on your computer. Like that was a very new idea. That really affected me a lot. So Beeple came from this stuffed toy uh, over there, this Ewok looking toy. And it sort of, when you cover its eyes, it lights up. And the like first very early work that I did was very much about the interplay and, and very tight syncing between audio and video. That's kind of where that came from because it, it sort of makes noise when you cover up and block the light that it's seeing. And so I thought that was kind of a cool juxtaposition. The early programs that I used to make the artwork were insanely primitive by today's standards. When I was very, very young, I was just using, you know, MS Paint and, and stuff like that. But compared to the software that I use now, it is just night and day in terms of the, the technological capabilities of what's possible now. It's sort of like I have a giant toy box. And I've got all these 3D models, which are just sort of, you know, a, a 3D representation of an object. And I can kind of put them together in all different ways. Instead of sort of painting with, you know, a line where I have to draw everything out, I can paint with dogs. I can paint with people. I can paint with Buzz Lightyear heads. And it presents new opportunities that just weren't there in the past because before it's like, well, if you want a dog, okay, you better be good at drawing dogs because that's what it's gonna take to put a dog in the picture. Now, it's more about the ideas and sort of putting together these things in different interesting ways. And I think this is a workflow that you're gonna see more people employ as time goes on. Anything you can think of, you can make. There is no sort of like limits to, to kind of what's possible at this point. So an NFT is a non-fungible token. It is a sort of proof of ownership of a virtual item. It's backed by the blockchain. So just like with Bitcoin, you're able to sort of prove that you are the only person that owns this and it cannot be copied. It allows you to collect digital art in a way that you just could not before. I believe will really unlock the sort of next chapter of art history in terms of digital art now being looked at as something that can be collected. The entire sort of traditional art world is based on building collections and people selling pieces. That just was not possible before. So I think they're really, the two worlds are just gonna absolutely merge and it's just gonna be another art form, just like street art or painting or sculpture or anything else. Okay guys, this is my studio. Let me uh, show you around here. We got the place um, primarily to make the physicals for the spring collection. This spring we sold about $14 million worth of artwork and 
along with that, we had to make a bunch of physicals. Um, there's a bunch of different pieces and they're all sort of like, you know, kind of put together here. There's screens. Um, and I, and I kind of look at this as sort of the next evolution of like the print. Look at these and play with the different materials and, and um, look at the artwork in each piece of artwork and make a physical that felt sort of like representation of this. We really wanted to make the space very much a kind of extension of the artwork and something that feels very experiential and just make it feel like the studio of the future. In like 20 years, literally almost every artist is gonna be a digital artist because we live in a very digital world and, and there's gonna be such a huge need for 3D assets with AR and VR and you know, as these things mature and, and become more sort of like mainstream, digital artists already shape so much of the visual language that we see. <laughs> it is very, very surreal. It is like such a massive honor. And I think it's so exciting to see this validation of digital art that it has been not just made by me, but an entire community of people over the last 20 years. Now people looking at it in a different light and looking at it as being just as valuable as any other art form.